Hello everyone and we're finally back to making an art in Houdini series and there are only three chapters left. Okay, so hopefully within the next two weeks I'll finish all of it. So the only thing left from a modeling standpoint are the clouds and then the final two chapters will deal with uh, the shaders and the final lighting and rendering. So in this lesson I'm going to make uh, one cloud and a fog volume. Okay, so you get an idea of how both those things are done. Okay, so this is the final scene. So we're just going to make like one cloud structure because the technique is the same for any cloud structure. And then we'll just make the fog in the background. The great thing about the technique is that it is, it is extremely, uh, you can art direct it to any extent that you want. So it, you can create very procedural clouds or you can like in this case, since I'm following this particular image from uh, Spirited Away. If you like, since we want this exact structure, then you can actually make that exact structure as well. Okay. So uh, like if you've done concept art and you, you've drawn a cloud in a very specific shape, then the Houdini cloud tools are a very good way to, you know, just make that. Okay. So what we'll start off with is I'll just take a simple piece of geometry. And I'll call this as cloud. I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll reshape this. So I'll just press Z and I'll take, uh, let me just see, there's a cloud shape somewhere in here. Yeah, let's shape it like this. And I'll also give it a color so that we can spot it. Uh, let's make it yellow. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just jump in here. I'll take a sphere uh, and We'll keep it to polygon about 10 sides and I want it like slightly above. Okay. So I'm going to just come to the front view and we'll push it up to around 0.9. So there's a little bit going down. Like I don't want it exactly on top. Okay. Then I'm going to create a line and we want to push it in the Z direction. Let me just ghost everything so we can see. Yeah. Okay. So this way and then like hide everything else again. So the direction will be one in Z and zero in everything else. And then I want it uh, in the middle. So I'll take the length, we'll copy it, go to Z, paste rate of reference, divided by minus two. So now it's in the middle. And I want it about 40, okay, in length. So it's a fairly big, this thing. Like, let me just uh, host the other objects. Yeah, so it's a fairly big thing. So we'll push it into the background. So then it'll be, you know, properly in, in size and shape. Okay, then the next thing we want to do is we want to resample this. So the reason for resampling is that uh, resampling gives us the curve view parameter. Okay, which makes life a little easier. So I want to keep this, uh, like this will give me too many points. I don't want those many because this is about 400 points. So let's take it up so that we only about, about 20, 25 odd points. Yeah, I think this is okay. So 1.2, let's keep it to 1.25. Okay, and then just come down here and turn on the curve view attribute. Okay, so this will make, this will make it easier for us. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna generate a, a ramp that will control our P scale. So we can give it like a basic shape. Okay, so I'm gonna take a wrangle node and we'll just do at p scale is equal to we'll do ch ramp and let's call it scale and this will be controlled using at curve view okay and then we'll multiply it with an additional size parameter so that you know if we want to make it bigger or smaller we can do that yeah and then just click this Okay, and like keep the size to one. And then if we want to make it bigger or smaller, we can do that later. And then just do copy to points. Yeah, so we have this, this is good. Now what you want to do is we just want to give it some basic shape. So I'm going to take this up over here and take that down. Yeah, something like this. I'll add an additional point in the middle and just sort of scale it up. So something like this. And maybe just in, like lower the resample so that you don't have like too many gaps or anything like that. Yeah, I think this is okay. 
Okay, now the next step is we just want to give it some basic shape so it looks like this. So just take an edit. And what you want to do is press 2 so we can select a point and you also want to come to like let's just come to the front no let's come to the left view I'll select some points and press T so we can move it and then change the soft settings like increase the radius but change the distance metric from surface to radius so that uh, it will pick up like all the spheres because if you keep it to surface then it will only pick up the one that it is connected to okay if you keep it to radius it will just pick up everything and just increase this so that you know we get like a fair bit and then you can just move it around so I'm just going to take this yeah turn off the uh, the secure selection so then we can sort of just you know make additional selections and move it out and then just shape it the way you want it so the idea with this is that even if you want to do something like uh, even if you want to go to ZBrush and then model something in ZBrush and then bring it here and then work it that way you can even do that you know like that's the great thing about this technique is that you can just model the cloud wherever you want like that's not an issue yeah so I think this is good you know like the basic shape is fine yeah okay this is fine okay now what you want to do is just take take a cloud node and the other great thing about this technique is that you can easily transfer it to any other software that you want okay because nowadays most software support VDB and what this generates is essentially a VDB so at the end of it if you just want to do an export then you can use Houdini just as a cloud generator and then you know use it wherever you want okay so take the cloud and first thing is we need it to be you know much more detailed than this so get the samplings get the uh, divisions up to about 350 I think that will give you yeah so that is good enough then the next thing we want is you want to scatter some additional shapes on it okay so come to uh, scatter shapes and then turn on secondary shape okay and then what you want to do is you want to take the shape size to around one so you'll get some shapes on this and then you want to increase the uh, scatter points yeah yeah I think this is good Okay, and then uh, yeah you can adjust the size a little more yeah I think this is fine like what we can do is we can come back to the edit and make adjustments like I could probably come here and select okay, like let's select all of this and what I want to do is just yeah press uh, press E and then just scale it up like that yeah so it's you know broader at the base yeah I think this is good yeah okay so this is fine and then uh, let's do one more thing it's just so that we can see it better just take an environment light or uh, let's do one thing let's just take a uh, sunlight okay so just come to lights and we can turn on uh, let's add a distant light Yeah, so the idea is that we can just see what is going on. Otherwise, it's a little difficult to visualize. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the next thing we want is uh, we just want to add noise to this. Okay, so you can just come in here and then take a cloud noise. If you, uh, if you wanted more detail, just increase the... Uh, just increase the sampling subdivisions right it just it depends on uh, like how close the cloud is going to be like if it's going to be fairly close to your camera then take this up to around 600 or 700 it will make it a little slow but uh, you'll get more detail okay like you won't see the banding then okay so just connect this to cloud noise and what you want to do is uh, increase the spatial scale a little bit yeah so that the noise is a little bit bigger and we'll take the element size to around 1.5 so it's relatively big and I'll increase the roughness a fair bit and I'll also increase the octaves so we get you know a little more noise like that or let's do one thing let's get the spatial scale down to around 1.5 yeah and then just increase the amplitude yeah there you go see so that's better 
And then the last thing we want to do is I don't want, I want the bottom to be a little more flat. So just turn on up vector fall off. Okay, see, so that will make sure that, you know, your cloud at the base is not as noisy. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Like this is how you make a cloud. Okay, like if you want, you can add multiple levels of cloud noise. That is also fine. But uh, yeah, this is the basics of it. Okay, now uh, the one thing, if you are working with Octane, which is important, is that within the plugin, okay, within the plugin, if you are going to render this cloud, make sure that it's a volume and not a VDB because uh, it extracts it a lot faster. Okay, so it's just a rendering tip. Okay, so what you can do is at the end of it, just take a VDB convert and just convert this to a volume. Like that's it, don't do anything else, just convert it to a volume. So when you render it, you'll notice that the render will start faster. If you keep it to VDB, you'll notice that it will slow down a fair bit. So it doesn't affect the render time. It just affects the uh, geometry processing. Okay, so make sure that you always do this when you're working within Octane. Okay, so this is the cloud. The next thing we want to do, and I'll do it within the same file, within the same SOP, is uh, we want to create uh, a fog. Okay, so the fog is relatively simple. Okay, so I'm just going to take a box and like, let me just sort of open this up a little bit. Yeah, so what you want to do uh, with a fog, now the thing is with, with Redshift and Octane, you get like an inbuilt fog volume in the render settings. I don't like using that at all because I can't control it and I don't enjoy working with that. Uh, if you're going to do fog, then this method for me works a lot better because uh, you can not only control the size of the fog, but you can also place it wherever you want. So if you want some very low lying ground level fog, you can make that. You can have multiple fog volumes, you know, to control different things. So if you're going to do fog in your scene, I think this method is a lot better because it is controllable, like it is infinitely controllable. Okay, so what you want to do is you just want to take this and then to start off with, we can just apply a cloud to this. So you don't need to do anything, just apply a cloud so it will become like a volume. I'll get it to around 150 and then get the density down to one because the default density is usually pretty high. Okay. If you want, you can go lower as well. Let's, let's go to around 0 0.1. Now, the next thing we want is we want to be able to control the fading of the fog. Right, like maybe you don't want fog to work closer at the camera and then it should become dense. So all of those things we want to be able to control. So I want to be able to control the fog fading in, in all three axes. So what you want to do is just take a warp. So take a volume warp. Okay. And this will have a density, density volume in there, which is basically what we want. Okay, so just connect this in here. And all you want to do is take something called as relative to bounding box. Plug in the first input in here and then extract all three axes. Okay, so just take a vector to float and then we'll take three ramp parameters. I'll just call it, I'll switch this to spline and call it X and Y and Z. Yeah, and then just plug in each one, one, two, and three. And then just do a multiply with your density. Okay, so just take this. And so this comes in here. This goes in there. You can see it fading off. And this comes in here. There you go. That's pretty much it. Now what you can do is, so X, let's say I want to keep it the way it is. And then the Z, I want to keep it the way it is. See, so I can control it like if I want, you know, like if I want, if I want to fade off the fog towards the top. Okay. So see, I can do that. And then if I want to fade off the fog sideways, then I can just come in here. I can keep this and I can just fade it out like that. See, so I can fade off the sides. You can keep it to B spline. It'll look better. Okay. And then maybe if I want to fade off the fog towards the front and then it should pick up towards the back, then I can do this. See, so you can very easily control the fog then, you know, like this is the reason why this technique is a lot better than, and then you can make multiple of these, just duplicate them, place it wherever you want. 
like if you want a fog around a specific uh, mountain or something you don't want the fog anywhere else then you can you know do additional things like that and then lastly just for fun we can add a cloud noise to this because what that will do is it will just break up the structure okay like that is important as well so just increase the amplitude okay and then increase the spatial scale uh, increase the element size as well so let's make it around 3 yeah see so what this does is it gives you like a broken up volume and then we can try different ones. So I can try to use like Perlin and maybe we can lower the roughness. No, let's increase it. Yeah, and maybe I can increase this to around, let's say three in size. See, so this will give you, you know, a way to just you know, control the whole thing. And if you want, you can actually, like we can call this as uh, fade. And what we can do is if we don't want it, uh, if we, if we want the noise to happen before the fade, like I can remove this, see, and then I can apply it here at the end of it, see. So that will give you a slightly better result. Okay, But either ways, like, you know, whatever is preferable to you, you can just work with that. But this is how you can do fog. And what you can also try is you can come in here and you can turn off absolute noise so that, you know, it doesn't puff up too much. I'll keep this to around 1.5. Yeah. And then you can just take the box and adjust it and you can get a better result. You know, like if you want a bigger or a thicker fog volume or a more, you know, deeper fog volume, any of those things you can adjust, you know, like without, without any issues. And then as I said, like if you want to export this to any other software, like you want to export it to Maya or Cinema 4D or any software that supports VDB, you can just, you know, right click here come to save click on save geometry and make sure that the extension like by default it will be bgo make sure that you change it to vdb you know like that's pretty much it and then since we are going to use this in octane i'll apply the same thing here so we can just take this and click convert vdb and that's this is just as i said this is just a processing thing it's not really if you're not working in octane you don't need to do this yeah, so that's pretty much it. So this is how you can make a cloud and you can make a fog uh, in Houdini. So the next lesson, uh, we will go over the basic shader building that I did. And then the final chapter, I'll go through the lighting and rendering. So that's pretty much it.